So we'll start with last night. There was a, a major event in Silver Spring last night. It was, if you will, MOCO resistance movement. And needless to say, the resistance movement in Montgomery County is very strong and it will be growing. The president's advisor has indicated that every day there will be a fight to be fought. And I think every day there will be resistance. So you heard that from our senators, our congressmen, and my colleagues and myself, that we will do what we have to do to preserve the values important to our residents. We will, I'll just stop with that on that particular point. Let's turn to the Trust Act. Um, know that this is legislation that has been sponsored by, I think, almost every one of our delegates in Maryland uh, from Montgomery County. Because of that, we felt that there was a special responsibility to be a constructive force with respect to that legislation. We are, we are proud of how Montgomery County does its business in this regard. We have said that repeatedly. We think we strike the right balance between protecting our communities and protecting public safety. And for that reason, we will be providing the delegation with amendments that would conform the Trust Act to how we do our business. As to whether or not they accept those amendments, that is up to them. But we are proud of how we do our work and believe that it would be an appropriate model for the state. The bill that was introduced goes beyond what we do in Montgomery County and our county attorney had serious questions with respect to it on the basis of those concerns and questions. We felt it appropriate to say, well, provide us with amendments that would make it right. So that's the constructive role that we will try to play in this larger debate. We have Bethesda plan coming to the Fed committee this afternoon, the beginning of conversation with respect to transportation and land use sets of issues, staging sets of questions that have come up. Um, I think it is highly likely that we will adopt staging in this plan. Um, as to what those numbers are and the metrics are, I think that that's a, a question that we will get our minds around as we understand it more. Um, but the fundamental concept of whether or not we should have staging, I think, is one that there will be broad agreement with respect to. We haven't had one of my favorite conversations for some time, and that's about PEPCO. So uh, know that one of the fundamental aspects of the merger that was approved was the representation by Exelon and PEPCO that they would be able to make the system so reliable that they would promise to achieve a certain level of reliability if the merger was approved in 2016. That was a promise and it was a condition of the settlement. It was a promise that was not kept. They made a filing at the end of last month on January 31st in which they acknowledged they did not meet the reliability standards that they promised in the settlement. And as a result of that, approximately 20,000 outages occurred in PEPCO's service territory that would not have occurred had they honored and kept their promise. So I am calling upon the Maryland Public Service Commission in a letter sent today to have consequences. A deal is a deal. And if there aren't consequences, it's simply not okay. It makes this, yeah. we opposed this merger at the county council level unanimously. We opposed it because we didn't think that Exelon brought any secret sauce to bear when it comes to reliability, that PEPCO should be held responsible to meet the highest levels of reliability with or without the merger. So the fact that this enhanced reliability played such a large role in approval of a merger that occurred on a three to two vote seems to me to be so terribly important that there be financial consequences for failing to keep such an important pledge. 
Another issue that we work real hard on in Montgomery County is our Vision Zero. There's a draft plan that is out with respect to Vision Zero because we have way too many pedestrian crashes that occur in Montgomery County, not unlike the rest of the state. But we are the first county in the state of Maryland to adopt Vision Zero. And a key element of that is, in my judgment, things like the hawk signal. So when I raise this issue with the head of SHA and our transportation uh, secretary, they indicated they were supportive of it. Well, then there was testimony with respect to state legislation that would ensure that the hawk system is good for Maryland because right now we can't have hawk signals because Maryland s does not recognize hawk signals, unlike the federal government, which does recognize hawk signals and which the evidence shows that there's been, in some instances, a 60 percent reduction in fatalities as a result of using hawk signals. So I was pleased to learn that SHA has come forward with amendments to the state bill that now will allow for there to be hawk signals in Maryland, and my hope would be that there would be hawk signals in Montgomery County. Let me I have to say that uh, in my 10 plus years on the county council, it is only this year that I've become intimately involved in cemeteries particularly African-American cemeteries. We have the issue in West Bard, and we had a, a different issue in Tobytown. It was peculiar that during our honoring of Black History Month, in which we had this video of Tobytown, that we saw a clip of the Tobytown Cemetery, a historically designated cemetery, and it was in terrible shape. It is property that is controlled by our HOC, our Housing Opportunity Commission. And so last week I wrote a, a strong letter to the head of HOC saying, you, you have to take care of this cemetery. It is not okay for it to look the way it looks. In the West Bard situation, I remain hopeful that there will indeed be a proper recognition of this site um, I believe that the planning board is doing what it ought to do, step by step, but at the end of the day, I remain optimistic that this site will be properly recognized. Why don't I open it up to, to questions at that point? Again, going back to PEPCO and the PSC, so what do you want to happen? Um, and how likely is it that the PSC will respond in the way that you want? That is definitely a two-part question. So what I've asked for is that for there to be financial consequences for failing to meet it, i.e. fines. I'm not specifying the number. That's not appropriate for me to do. But I think there ought to be a significant penalty. This was the linchpin of the deal. So for them to fail to meet it, it seems to me there ought to be consequences. Otherwise, you make a mockery of what you've set up. As to whether or not I believe this particular Public Service Commission will in fact do so, I am not optimistic. Why? Um, I d well, I wasn't terribly optimistic under the last set of Public Service Commissioners. Um, I think the commissioners that have been selected by this administration are less likely to be pro-consumer. Roger, did I hear you right? You said 20,000 outages? 20,000 outages. 21,000. 21. Is that, so it must be like, what does that mean? It's everything from a house with the, the light winks out for a few seconds and, and up to like big regions? Yes. Outages. Okay. Yes. Do we know how many in Montgomery County? I do not have that information. And that's over what period of time, the 21,000? That would, 20,000 would be for 2016. So they were supposed to meet a certain level of what's called safety. 
Don't ask me. System, average, interruption. I can almost get it here. Bear with me for a moment. System average interruption frequency index. That is what they failed to meet, was what they promised. They PSC, it was. It, to, to no, it was a promise that was not only made to the PSC, it was a promise that was incorporated in the settlement conditions. Again, they raised their hand and said, gosh, if Exelon buys Pepco, we will be able to do this work so much better and here's how much better we will do it by, and we commit to doing it. And it became a condition of the settlement, a condition they have failed to meet. And just so I'm clear, in order to meet those safety standards to, to stay within the agreement, how, do they have to have zero outages? No, 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 no. 5,000 or 10,000 mm -hmm. or? I can give you the precise number. I don't think it'll be meaningful to you in the way in which this metric is used, it's in the letter that you will see receive. Okay. What else, guys? What are some of the amendments made to the Trust Act? We will get those, I believe we're meeting uh, in just a, a bit to have state ledge, and I've invited the uh, county attorney to join us for that. I have asked on behalf of the council for those amendments to be drafted, and my hope is that he will today have those amendments. Yeah. I have not seen them at this point. Um, thoughts on the Watkins Mill interchange? The governor, the governor released documents on the interchange in general. He's saying that this, you know, quote unquote, will kill bill is going to, it's one of the projects he listed that the Watkins Mill interchange, the bill will kill. What's your, what's your thoughts on the interchange, and, you know, is it proceeding as planned? Are you worried that? It, I am not worried that it will be harmed. I'm certainly not worried about the, the legislation that the governor feels so strongly about. This was legislation that originated in Virginia from a Republican legislature. It's simply designed to ensure transparency in the process. Here are why, here's why we concluded that these transportation projects will serve the most people in the best and highest good. That's all the legislation fundamentally requires. It allows them to deviate from it, should they explain why. So I just, I don't understand why he's so fixated on that as opposed to making the investments we need to improve transportation, like Watkins Mill, like 270, like the American Legion Bridge. So don't fight these fights that just divert attention from what is real. What is real is the congestion on 270. What is real is the congestion at the American Legion Bridge. And let's move forward aggressively on those issues, as opposed to fight these fights that you're going to lose. You said yesterday's town hall was a Montgomery County resistance movement. What do you mean by resistance? What does resistance in Montgomery County look like vis-a-vis -vis what's going on with the federal government? I think what it looks like is an, aff an affirmation of the values that are important to us. So just go through the list of things that we're now dealing with. So we're dealing with a, a, an incredible stress on our immigrant community, particularly the undocumented community. You see this in the national press across the country, that people are now afraid to go out of their houses. This is real. This is frightening, and we're not talking simply as we do in Montgomery County by making sure that if we have somebody that in our jail that we know is a criminal, that we know has done violent acts, we cooperate, okay? But are we really at a place in our country where someone who has lived here 20 years, who has U.S. citizens here, who go about their job and have jobs, are absolutely wonderful people. Now they can be picked up and taken away from their families? That is not Montgomery County's values. And so we're going to stand up and we're going to speak out. You know, I come from a place of search for common ground. I grew up in the 60s in the peace and love. We are in a different place now where it is a time where silence is not okay, where you need to stand up every opportunity. 
So that's just one example. I, I'm, I've spent most of my 10 years on the county council fighting for a sustainable community, environmental issues. We now have a president who is basically put in the head of EPA, someone who has basically worked with the oil and gas and coal companies his entire career and doesn't believe in climate change. We have a president who doesn't believe in climate change. That is an alternative fact, okay? So on every level, we are gonna be called upon to advance our values and to resist what we see happening at the federal level. Now we are fortunate that we have terrific federal representation. You couldn't have better than Ben Cardin and Chris Van Hollen and Delaney and Graskin and Sarbanes. We have terrific federal representation. I do not envy them, their task. But it isn't clear to me that they are, will succeed at their level. And so the, to the extent to which we have the ability to protect people, look at the transgender issue. Okay? I am so proud of our school system for standing up and saying we are not changing how we do our business in Montgomery County. Okay? But now we've got a federal government that's going the other way. So these are the kinds of things in, that every day you have concerns about the Muslim community. We are going to stand with our Muslim community. You have concern about the rise in hate crimes. You've seen there was just a report today about cemeteries that had been disturbed, Jewish cemeteries that had been disturbed. Okay? You had a president who gave a proclam uh, who, who honored the Holocaust without saying Jewish people? Really? Okay, I mean, just go through the list every day. It is, you just scratch your head and say, we're in, we're in a different reality. It's upside down. It's Alice in Wonderland. If resistance is really the goal, why don't you sign on to the Trust Act then? That's a lot of resistance in that. That's totally, utterly resistant um, to, um, to ICE's enforcement objectives. So, again, what I would say to you is I think we do it right in Montgomery County, which is we make sure that public safety is honored, okay? If we have somebody in our jail that has created a violent crime, who's undocumented, and if ICE knocks on our door, we let them know this person is due to be released on X time. And if they have a warrant, we hold them, okay? If they have probable cause, we hold them, which is what we should do. So we have two responsibilities. We have a responsibility to public safety and we have a responsibility to hold our community together. We do it the right way. The Trust Act as introduced went far beyond that. It said you can't cooperate no matter what, okay? That's not who we are. That is a quote, true sanctuary city that does not respond at all we are comfortable with the way we do our business. At last night's rally, did you also address minimum wage and what was your message? Yes, I did because I was asked the question. I mean, these people know how to do their work, right? I was asked the question on minimum wage. And so I promised them, as I have said repeatedly, before the year is out, we will pass a $15 an hour minimum wage. I have said that repeatedly, that this process is about getting to yes. It is about having a different balance when it comes to our small business community in particular, and how we address it. The county executive has said, for example, he wants exemptions for small business. So we have to get our minds around what is, how can we structure this so that we can both advance the legitimate desire for people who work too hard for too little to do better and minimize the harm. So that's the balance we're trying to strike. It is about balance. Uh, going back to immigration, um, has there been any rates here in the county? And also, where are we standing with the plan that you guys announced a few weeks ago to assist the immigrant community? So I'm not aware of any raids that have taken place in Montgomery County. Okay. And we have a meeting tomorrow. 
includes the county executive around this very table in which we will hear again from the county executive and his team the steps that we will be taking affirmatively to ensure that if there is a raid, if there are parents that are taken, how are we going to help the kids? What is the plan? We will also have protocols for trying to ensure that there are rumors that take place with respect to raids are squashed as fast as possible or confirmed because there's just nothing more scarier than the notion of an ICE raid when in fact there hasn't been one. So we have tentatively set up a protocol with Senator Cardin's office. Obviously ICE is a federal responsibility, federal employees. They don't respond to Montgomery County as quickly as they would to a Senator Cardin. So we're trying to work out the details of that and just to, and also to discuss why the Community Foundation was one of the organizations that had indicated that they would be going forward with a fund that would allow private residents to contribute as well as perhaps the county to contribute to legal assistance which when we met, that was one of the top priorities. So we want to hear an update with respect to where that conversation stands. Thoughts on Tom Perez, former member of the county council? It was obviously great, very gratifying to have one of our own become uh, the leader of our party. He obviously is such an accomplished person. Uh, I just, I, I think, I was a big supporter of his in this race. Um, I, you know, his labor secretary, civil rights, uh, justice department, uh, the guy, and of course, a Montgomery County council member. I mean, you could stop right there. I mean, that's all the credentials one would need. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's good for our party, and uh, I'm I'm very pleased for him. So um, on the agenda today, there's an item for a closed session on the... <laughs> this is the closed the Maryland, session. Well, this is on the Maryland Public Information Act. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, just because it's a closed session doesn't mean you can't explain a little. Is this a, 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 a records request that you're deliberating over? Is this a... A lawsuit you're deliberating over? Are you talking about changes in the uh, trying to amend the act, Mr. Turk? No, no. <laughs> just because it's a closed session, you can't just throw in a shroud over the entire event. You can't just say, "I will not say word one." I'm sorry. It does say. It does, in fact, say it's a Maryland Public Information Act matter. Right. You guys just going to sit around and read it? Y yes, we, 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 we just thought, you know, we had a couple hours, you know, we thought we'd just spend some time with respect to it. So it's clearly an issue arising out of that act. So it's a records request that you're talking about. It is clearly an issue that arises out of that act. You know, really. Do you see the irony in having a closed session? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yes. <laughs> I see the irony. There were two uniformed officers at last week's meeting. Are we going to see more police officers at council meetings? Is security increasing? Yes. Can you tell us why? Okay. I, I guess what I could say to you is that we have looked at how other agencies, other state governments, if you go to Annapolis, you will see a lot of security precautions. If you go to other counties throughout the region, you will see that there are more precautions than have been taken in Montgomery County. Um, and I would say to you that um, there is a feeling that there is a different anger out there and a different energy out there today than there was when I certainly began. And so these are steps that we are taking in order to ensure that there are appropriate precautions in place. Is this in response to any kind of particular credible threat? No. Can 
Can you comment on council members Levin's bill that would um, create healthier vending machines? I believe I'm a co-sponsor. Well, I think that what we're trying to model is that you can eat well and eat healthily. And so anything we can do, particularly in county facilities, this is only applies to county facilities that we want to be a model for ensuring that our people eat better and live longer and healthier lives. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a nice measure. Go to the town hall last night? I did. Okay. I did. So there was uh, an indoor and an outdoor. I drew the short straw and had the outdoor. <laughs> I, I don't know. You'll have to talk to the organizers. No, but uh, Mr. Hucker, Mr. Katz, and I spoke outdoors with the uh, senators uh, and indoors. Another, a couple of my colleagues were speaking indoors as well. Beginning tomorrow, candidates can start filing for the 2018 election. Have you given that any thought? I will not be filing on the 28th. Any thoughts on running for county executive? My first obligation is right here doing this job. But um, yes, I am giving serious thought to that as well. Any idea when you make an announcement either way? No. No timeline. I, I have a job to do here. I'm trying to do that job. And in my spare moments, I will be seriously looking at that opportunity. Anything else, gang? Thank you.